She gently removes the lining of her long dress and undies the corseted waist. The Swiss girl was sold by her father to the English nobleman behind her for 500 pounds for three days. If she succeeded in conceiving the child within three days, she will get a huge sum of money to pay off her father's debt. But Sophie must do this process, not to invest a single bit of emotion, and she must keep it a secret afterwards and never see the baby. Charlie arranged the first meeting in a hotel. He made it a point not to be seen entering the room at the same time. They knew it was just a deal, one for the money, one for the baby. They completed their work mechanically, like to Cox. Early the next morning, Charlie finds Sophie alone. He told her that he was doing it for the same reason she was. Charlie is an English aristocrat, and his family is forcing him to carry on the family line. But his wife had fallen off a horse 10 years ago and become a vegetable, so he had to find a surrogate. It seems they both found a reason for this absurdity. So on the second night, Sophie is clearly more involved than last night but she had to keep reminding herself not to get emotionally involved. The third morning, Sophie is standing on the beach in a long robe. She said to Charlie, who was slowly approaching, We're so close. Don't you think people will find us? Sophie wanted to shout at the sea, but in the end, she did not shout out. But in just two or three days' time, the principle of their deal seemed to be erased. The unspoken love in their hearts rose up. So the last night, they completely removed the defenses into all the hearts and feelings. But three days passed in the blink of an eye. Sophie didn't expect that she would be the one to go out to make money. But she had a crush on her employer. The parting was so sad. Ten months later Sophie gave birth to a baby girl. But the baby did not belong to her. After the baby was born, she didn't even see it before the maid took it away and sent it to England. However, Sophie, who broke the rules, missed her daughter all the time. Whenever there is a holiday or her daughter's birthday, she will draw a card to wish her. But it is not clear how much of this longing is because of her daughter and how much is because of Charlie. After seven years of pining for her daughter, Sophie found Charlie's estate, but she did not directly identify herself as the child's biological mother. Instead, she applied for a job as a governess. She was in no hurry to meet her daughter, but was content to see her. Sophie's salary as a governess was 25 pounds a year. You can imagine what a large sum of money 500 pounds was back then. However, the maid here told her Louisa was a grumpy child. She had already pissed off three teachers before Sophie arrived. Desperate to see her daughter, Sophie could not find Louisa. A kindly maid told her that Louisa often hid in the pavilion. In the center of the lake, Sophie opened the door. She finally saw her daughter's figure in the pavilion in the distance. After eight years, she finally saw the daughter she had been longing for. But the first thing her daughter said when she saw her was, Then bugger away, lady. Looking at her daughter's back as she quickly ran away, Sophie saw her, the loneliness and isolation beneath her mean exterior. The next day, Charlie returned from a business trip in town, seeing the joyful look of father and daughter. Sophie smiled with relief. At least she could see that Charlie's fatherly love had not been absent all these years. And that's when they met. When Charlie saw Sophie in his house, he was speechless with surprise. They go to the study alone. Charlie immediately says he wants to fire her. Sophie didn't panic. She had expected it. The rules require a monk's cushion for firing someone. All she had to do was to get Charlie and her daughter to accept her within a month. However, Louisa was very uncooperative. She wouldn't study with them. And Sophie was furious. This led Charlie to think she was trying to abuse her daughter. With Sophie's promise, Charlie agreed to compromise. She picked up the blue paint and threw it directly at the girl's face. Then she took the red one and threw it on herself. She hid her identity as her daughter's tutor so that she could save her daughter from loneliness. But Louisa lived in loneliness for years. She was so grumpy that she slammed her lunch on the door. Then she stares at Sophie with a vengeance. Sophie was not to be outdone. If you don't eat it, I won't eat it either. Her daughter started verbally abusing her. She was so young that she started to swear. Sophie taught her how to behave. After a period of Sophie's training, Louisa began to let her guard down. When she saw Sophie's exquisite word cards, she couldn't contain her curiosity and started to learn. The whole family is happy to see that the arrogant Louisa has changed for the better. An aristocratic man and I Sophie and proposes to her. But Sophie refused decisively. Her heart goes out to her daughter and even more to Charlie. After learning that Sophie had turned down the opportunity to marry into a wealthy family, Charlie knew that she did it for Louisa's sake. What surprised him even more was that she had not seen her for eight years. And now she was so strong and beautiful, she exudes a charming aura. In the dimly lit room, Charlie subconsciously said, It reminded Sophie of the night they first met eight years ago. Charlie had said the same thing. They disliked the light to bright because they were afraid 
that the adoration shown on her face would be seen, so he needed the darkness to hide his heart. Suddenly Charlie's sister-in-law interrupted the two. This left Charlie in a deep conflict. He sits by the bedside of his sick wife. On one side is his beloved wife, a vegetable. On the other side is his love for his wife. Who is a vegetable? How can he choose? Sophie would often peek at Charlie. Missing the warmth of eight years ago, she slowly lowered her head. Now Louisa has become a good girl. She follows Sophie's lead and learns her words. Sophie promised that she would make Louisa learn to obey. And she did. At night, they Saturday around the fire. Louisa told Sophie she knew that the woman in the hospital bed was not a real mother. That's why she pretended her mother was around. So she went to the lake pavilion alone. After putting her daughter to sleep, Sophie came into the living room and met Charlie. And Charlie told her about his choice. Sophie felt pained by Charlie's rejection. But Charlie's heart was also suffering at this time. In the dim light, there were shadows to block the light of their love. The desire in their hearts was ignited by the fire. Their breath slowly turned into gasps. It was a night when they finally broke free from morality. They gave their hearts to their desires. Afterwards, they avoided the crowded ball. They went to the room and held hands. They danced close to each other to the music. Two loving hearts finally opened up. Even when they happened to meet in the hallway, they would stop to take each other's hands and lean on each other's shoulders. But all this was seen by Louisa. She was so sad that she was walking on the ice in her thin clothes. Suddenly, the ice broke beneath her feet. She fell into the icy river of ice. She was about to die. Sophie rushed to the scene. She stepped over a broken piece of ice and sank into the river against the bone-chilling cold. She lifted her daughter up and finally brought her back from death. Louisa broke through her father's relationship with Sophie in her heart she had always imagined her real mother. Now her father's actions were like destroying her fantasy. It was a snowy morning. She walked on the fragile ice to the lake pavilion, dressed in thin clothes. By the time she woke up again, Sophie had already brought her back. Sophie gently caressed the frail Louisa. She told her firmly she would never leave her. But one day soon after that, a group of men in black broke into the house. They came here to liquidate Charlie's family fortune. It turned out that Charlie's father had already squandered all the money. Even the house was to be sold. Sophie learned it after talking with her sister-in-law. It turns out that since his wife became a vegetable, not only Charlie himself was trapped here, everyone was trapped in the manner she would rather her sister died. Charlie came back from the town. He came to his wife's hospital bed with red eyes. For 10 years, he's been on this mission. Even if his wife becomes a vegetable, he still wants to keep her in this world. He got down on his knees and asked his wife, asking her to tell him what to do. Charlie then went to the fireplace. He put out the flames with dirt. Then he opened the window to let the cold went into the small room. Then he went to his wife's bedside. And with tears in his eyes, he lifted her blanket layer by layer. Then he clasped his hands and prayed, asking God to take his wife away. And so his wife frowned to death that night. No one knew it was Charlie's doing. They thought it was just an accident. They said it was good that she was dead. At least now, she was at peace after 10 years of suffering. Charlie held a grand funeral for her. It's hard to say whether it's good or bad. That one person's death has relieved everyone. Only Sophie knew that Charlie had killed his wife for her. At this moment, her heart is full of contradictions. Full of guilt. At the same time, she is happy to have succeeded in getting Charlie. Seven long years of longing had finally come to fruition. Her desire had destroyed all obstacles but it also destroys everything about Charlie. Charlie asked her if she regretted it. Her answer is no. Finally, Louisa came to Sophie's room. She saw every blessing Sophie had written for herself in those seven years. Now she realized that Sophie was her mother. Mother and daughter finally recognized each other. Louisa finally called her mother. Louisa was no longer alone in the Lake Pavilion. She had found her mother 